I'm going to talk about the early signs of ovarian cancer. Now, what's unique about the ovarian cancer is this. It's one of the most lethal types of cancer that involves female reproductive organs. Over 300,000 women get this cancer every single year in the U.S., and 200,000 of them don't make it. So early detection or even prevention is the key. But before I get into it, I really need to tell you something. And this involves the decision of whether or not to get chemotherapy. Now, just realize I'm not telling you to do one way or the other. I just want to give you the data. And there's some important data that you need to have to make the best decision. And unfortunately, it's very difficult to get. And I'm going to put this study down below, but you need to check this out. Now, this study was done at the Department of Radiation Oncology at Northern Sydney Cancer Center. And it was actually published uh, in a journal called Clinical Oncology. And they were looking at the actual impact of chemo on survival rates within five years. Now, it's, it's interesting to me that they, everything related to cancer is like on a five-year uh, survival rate. If you make it to that point, uh, you're considered a success. And this relates to American adults that get cancer. This is what they found. The people that opt for chemo only have a 2.1% increase in survival compared to people who don't opt for chemo. And I know you're saying it's, well, it's an improvement, it's 2.1%, but in actuality, that is a very, very small improvement. However, when you look at the data that extends beyond five years, things are completely different. Okay, let me explain. Dr. Hardin Jones, professor of medical physics and physiology at Berkeley, California, looked at data way past this five-year survival rate. He looked at 25 years. He wanted to understand what happens with people that get chemo and people that don't get chemo over a 25-year span. And this is what he found. People who refused chemo actually lived 12 0.5 years longer than people that did get chemo. That's incredible data, but this is my disclaimer. I'm not telling you to get chemo or not to get chemo. I'm just giving you the data and I highly recommend you read the data down below. But my question is always, why? Why would someone have worse outcomes when they get chemo? And the answer is the cancer treatment chemo has side effects of getting cancer, other types of cancer down the road, a reactivation of the original cancer that you had down the road. I mean, think about it. they're putting chemicals that destroy your cells that can alter things, that can damage the mitochondria. I mean, this is just important data in you evaluating what to do or what not to do. What are the early signs? Number one, persistent pelvic and abdominal pain and cramping. Now, when I mean persistent, I'm talking about discomfort that extends beyond your menstrual cramp. It's like all month long. This is one sign that potentially there could be a deeper problem. All right, number two, severe bloating in the lower abdomen area all month long beyond your cycle. What happens with cancer is it can back up into the lymph nodes in your pelvis, and there could be a lot of fluid retention and bloating um, in that area. All right, number three, an urge for frequent urination. Yet you may feel that not a lot of urine is coming out. Why? Because mechanically there's a, some tumorous mass that's obstructing the flow of urine. All right, number four, low back pain. Why? Because there's some mass in the pelvis that's putting pressure on nerves that are referring to your lower back. All right, number five, pain when you have sex. If there's a mass in your pelvic cavity, it's gonna be very uncomfortable to have sex. All right, and number six, a change in your menstrual cycle. If you're experiencing more bleeding, for example, that could be an indication, but realize that any of these symptoms don't mean you have cancer. They're just indicators that potentially there could be a deeper problem. Now, a couple of common tests that they do for ovarian cancer, there's a blood test called CA-125 they can do. There's also an MRI or a CAT scan to scope things out. There's also laparoscopy, which they can go in there with a camera. And there's also a biopsy. 
as well as a PET scan. These are all just tested, can be done. Now, relating to ovarian cancer, okay, which usually happens when you have estrogen dominance, there's a very important mineral, trace mineral, that um, could help you, okay, decrease the risk for this cancer um, and even improve things if you catch it very early. And that trace mineral is iodine. Iodine helps regulate the excessive amounts of estrogen. If you're estrogen dominant, iodine can help regulate that increased amount of estrogen. And the best source of iodine for this condition is sea kelp. And this is why sea kelp is so good for other types of estrogen um, dominant problems like fibrocystic breast or ovarian cyst or fibroids or endometriosis. And so just as iodine can help lower estrogen, taking estrogen, whether it's birth control pills or hormone replacement therapy or soy milk or soy products, or even dairy can all contribute to making you more estrogen dominant. The other thing that's really good to help regulate estrogen would be the cruciferous vegetables, the kale, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, the arugula, the cabbage, all awesome to help regulate your estrogen, as well as giving you the anti-cancer properties in cruciferous foods. And there's one compound that a lot of people take to help with estrogen dominance. It's called DIM, which is a concentrated form of cruciferous. And like I just mentioned, avoiding dairy would be another important thing if you're estrogen dominant. So these are some of the early um, signs that there could potentially be uh, a problem, but not necessarily. But in general, I think it's very important to actively and aggressively try to prevent cancer through having a healthy diet and as well as to avoid those things that can trigger cancer. If you hadn't seen my recent video on cancer, which I think is probably one of the most important videos that I put out, I put it right here. Check it out. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today.